It's a product overview video for the new Legacy SD80 Mac locomotives. These engines are available in the following road names. Each road name comes with two powered units and one non-powered dummy unit. The road names available are Conrail, Grand Trunk, Burlington, Pennsylvania, Norfolk Southern, and CSX. One of the CSX powered units are in the Motor City Freight Express set. There is a separate sale legacy powered unit in CSX as well as a separate sale non-powered unit. Out of the package you will receive the instruction manual for loading the memory module, the instruction manual for the locomotive, a smoke fluid pipette, and a smoke fluid funnel, the orange locomotive memory module specific to the road name and road number of the locomotive, as well as four replacement traction tires. These SD80 Max feature die cast trucks and side frames, pilots, fuel tank, stamp metal frame, plastic body shell with Odyssey 2 speed control, legacy rail sounds, a fan driven smoke unit, directional lighting, operating ditch lights that oscillate when you blow the horn, front and rear electrocouplers, as well as directional lighting. Now on our Legacy SD80 Mac, all of the switches for the locomotive are located underneath the radiator housing. This simply lifts straight off. It's held on by three magnets on these three tabs. Underneath the radiator hatch you'll find the switch panel as well as the manual volume pot. The switches for this locomotive are program run, odyssey on off, and smoke on off. In the run position is the position you place the locomotive to run it. In conventional mode this will allow your e-unit to cycle through all three directional states. The program position is used for assigning the ID number of the locomotive with either command or legacy. In conventional, program is used as the E-unit lockout switch to keep the locomotive going in one direction all the time. The Odyssey on off switch in the ODY position, Odyssey 2 speed control is enabled. In the no ODY position, Odyssey 2 is disabled. The smoke switch in the SMK position, the smoke unit is on and can be controlled on and off in legacy or command using the remote. In conventional mode, smoke must be, the switch must be in the SMK position for smoke to work or the no SMK position for smoke to be off. Finally, we have the volume potentiometer, which is used to manually increase and decrease the volume of the sound system. If you're using legacy or command, you can control the volume using just the remote alone. For our conventional operators, the 9-volt battery clip is located just behind the rear motor in the short housing. It is interesting to note that the 9-volt battery will not fit in this cavity here with this mounting bracket in place. You will either need to remove the body screws, take the shell off to install the 9-volt battery, or you can press down on this tab firmly and snap it off which the radiator hatch will stay on fine because it still has two magnets holding it down which will allow you to get the battery into the enclosure without removing the body shell. The choice is entirely yours. Now before we put our Legacy SD80 Mac on the track we want to make sure that we tell our Legacy remote everything about this locomotive. To do that we're going to use this orange memory module that comes with the locomotive. What we'll do is we'll address engine 29 on the cab because that's the last two digits of the cab number. We'll take our orange memory module and insert it in the top of our cab with the silver circle L facing up. We'll press the info key in the upper right hand corner and then the button underneath load. It tells us module inserted, Conrail 38588 SD80 number 4129 load engine data. Press the button under yes. It tells us the engine data is loaded. We can remove the orange module to continue. Take just a few minutes here and show you what this has done for us. It's already assigned our name. So by pressing the scroll button, 
You can see that it has set our type to a diesel. Scroll again. It has set our control to legacy mode. And scroll again. It has set our sounds to legacy rail sounds. To exit this menu, we simply press the info key one time. You can see Conrail SD80 stays at the top. When we address engine 29, the cab number appears momentarily. Once we press the AUX1 key, you'll notice that the touchpad changes. We have volume up, crew talk, manual RPMs up, volume down, the round black circle is shut down whenever we throttle up the locomotive. Then you'll notice that changes to a black triangle. That's for emergency stop. Once we stop the locomotive, it goes back to a black circle for shutdown. We have manual RPMs down, tower calm, smoke off, smoke on. Because it's a legacy locomotive, there's three levels of smoke. The icon here is ditch lights on, ditch lights off. What that will do is that will stop the ditch lights from oscillating or make them oscillate when you blow the horn. The R is engine reset. We have rule 17 lighting on and rule 17 lighting off. And all that rule 17 lighting is is when the engine is stopped at idle. The headlight is dim. When the locomotive begins moving it gets bright again. By pressing the speed bar you notice we have our six preset railroad speeds. Tower calm, smoke off, smoke on. This is a bar graph that directly represents the labor on the locomotive. As it goes up, labor is increasing. As it comes down, labor is decreasing. The number one inside the box represents roll speed. That's the very first speed step the locomotive will attain. We have effects up and effects down. As we press effects up, You'll notice it says labor increase on the top of the cab and the bar graph raises. By pressing effects down, it says labor decrease and the bar graph drops. To get back to the original menu, we press AUX1. want to point out that when you press engine 29, we have a couple different icons here that only appear when you address the locomotive. That is the startup icon in the lower left hand corner as well as the cab light on and off. Speed limit is used for setting the maximum speed that the locomotive is allowed to travel at. And once again, pressing AUX1 gets us back to the touchpad icons. Let's go ahead and lubricate our locomotive and we can get it on the track and put it through its paces. Now before we get the locomotive on the track and start operating it, we wanna make sure that we apply some light oil on the trucks and the collectors to prevent any unwanted squealing from occurring. To do this we simply use a needle applicator with some light oil and place this on the axle of the collector. Just a small drop of oil is all that's required. And then work that in with your finger. Do the same thing for the other collector. And repeat the same process for the front truck. You also want to make sure that you put a small dab of oil on the axle where it goes through the bearings in the truck frame itself. You want to do this for all three axles on this truck. And go ahead and work that in with your fingers. You can rotate the gearbox assembly with the truck attached. Just work that in. I strongly suggest that you do not put grease on these external gears as that will just be something to collect dirt and debris on the layout. It will stick to the gears, get bound up inside and eventually cause operational problems that you don't want. You want to make sure that you repeat those process with the front truck as well and then we're ready to get the train on the track and get it underway. Now before we get our SD80 Mac operating we need to first assign it its ID number. So we've already told our Legacy Cab 2 that under engine 29 is a Conrail SD80 Mac. We've done that by loading the memory module. We now need to tell this SD80 Mac that it's going to respond to engine 29. To do this, we'll remove the radiator hatch from the back of the locomotive and place the program run switch in the program position. Apply track power. 
You'll notice that when power is applied that only the number boards on the rear and the front of the locomotive come on. No other lights or sounds will occur until you address the locomotive. So using our legacy remote, we press engine 29 and the set button. The blast of the horn tells us that it has taken the command. So now we can place the program run switch back in the run position. Now before we get our engine really running, we want to shut off power and make sure that we add smoke fluid to the smoke unit. To do this, we want to use a needle applicator. The locomotive comes with a funnel and a smoke fluid pipette. However, the grills on the top of this smoke unit outlet hatch are pretty tight and getting that funnel in there will be very difficult. So we're simply going to use a needle bottle applicator, stick it down between the grills and give a short squirt of smoke fluid in there. That squirt represents maybe eight to nine drops of smoke fluid. So we want to make sure that our Odyssey is in the our Odyssey switch is in the ODY position and our smoke switch is in the SMK position. And go ahead and replace the radiator hatch. Just held on with some magnets. And now we can go ahead and apply power and get our locomotive running. So now I'm going to press engine 29 on my legacy remote and use the icon in the lower left hand corner of the touchpad and you'll hear this dialog. Dispatcher here. Do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Copy that, dispatcher. We'll get up and running. Out. sound system on this locomotive, what we're going to do is we're going to lower the global volume of the locomotive. To do this is just a short horn blast and then the volume down icon on the touchpad. That bell that you hear signifies that we are lowering the overall volume. By overall volume I'm talking about the background sounds as well as the horn and the bell. This locomotive is equipped with two separate volume controls. First being the global sounds, which affects horn, bell, and the background sounds. And the second being just the background sounds themselves. The difference is, if I press the AUX1 or straight arrow key on my cab, and then my volume down icon on the touchpad, if I hold it, you'll notice that my background sounds go away completely. But I still have full horn and bell sounds. To bring those sounds back up, I simply press AUX1 or the straight arrow key, press and hold the volume up icon on the touchpad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play the tower comp for you. Dispatcher here, please hold your position. Over. Copy that. Out. Now the crew talk. Do whatever I have. Can I get the main line? Over. Affirmative, the track is yours. Over. That's great, thank you, sir. Out. Now the horn. Bell. Let's go ahead and turn our smoke unit on to the high setting. It's not it's not unlikely for the smoke unit to take a little time to heat up. If that occurs with your model, it's okay. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for that smoke fluid to soak into the batting and eventually work its way up to the element. If it takes a few minutes, even up to maybe two or three minutes before it starts smoking, that's normal. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and run through all eight notches of the RPMs manually so you can hear the different levels. Notch two. Three. Four. Six. 
seven. moving the ditch lights come on and the ditch lights oscillate with the horn and they continue to oscillate a few seconds after the horn as per the prototype. Go ahead and get the engine running a little faster so you can hear the squealing brakes. Apply the brakes now. Cab light comes on, tells us that we're back at idle. The uh, using the F coupler button, fire the front coupler. The R will operate the back coupler. When I press direction, my marker lights on the rear of the locomotive will go out, and the headlight will come on. The headlight on the front of the locomotive goes out and the marker lights come on. Once again, change direction. This SD80 Mac is also equipped with sequence control. Sequence control is a dialog of sounds that are directly responsive to the throttle inputs it gets. To enter sequence control, you simply press and hold the AUX1 or straight arrow key for three seconds. The locomotive will tell you it's entered sequence control by two bells and a short horn blast. Engine's now in sequence control. What this means is when we go to speed step one, we'll get a horn, and when we go, but the locomotive won't begin moving. Once we get to speed step two, it'll begin moving, give us crew talk, dialogue. The bell will come on and stay on until we crest speed step 23. So we're going to go ahead and put us in uh, roll speed, which is the very first speed step. Now I'm going to go to speed step 2. All of these sounds are happening automatically. I am not triggering them from the remote. Now that bell will stay on until we reach speed step 24, which I'll do now. The longer we run the locomotive, the more the locomotive has an opportunity to play some of these random sounds. So occasionally it'll give a grade crossing sequence and the horn blast. Um, you get some crew dialogue back and forth. Once again, all responsive to the throttle. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a drastic change in speed so you can hear the response I get for this. Now I'm going to make a drastic response in speed downward. You'll hear this dialogue. Dispatcher, I'm at slow speed. Out. Now there's a lot of different things a locomotive will do that are pretty much unscripted based solely on throttle responses alone. We encourage you to go ahead and uh, try them out, have some fun with it. Now as I turn the throttle down and once I get below speed step 24, my bell will turn on automatically. It will stay on until I reach speed step 2. I'm sorry, speed step 1. Now once I reach now once I reach speed step zero, 
I get that dialog as well. To exit sequence control, I simply press the AUX1 or straight arrow key and then the reset icon on the touchpad. The horn tells me that I've left sequence control. Now I can also add fuel to the tank of this locomotive by pressing and holding the reset key on the touchpad like this. And I just keep holding reset. The longer I hold it, the more fuel will add. Once I let off reset, I'll get this dialog. Dispatcher, we've got a full tank. Over. Roger that. Out. And finally, we'll play the shutdown sounds for you. This would be the black circle in the center of the touchpad. Sign off. Out. And once again, the locomotive is back to where it was when we first applied power where only the number board lamps are illuminated. All other lights and sounds are off as well as the smoke. To get the sounds to come back up again, I simply address engine 29 and use the on off button in the lower left hand corner of my touchpad to get my sounds to come back on again. Now if I press and hold that icon, I'll get a crew dialogue before the locomotive goes through its startup sequence. These SD80 Macs are available at your dealer now, and we hope you enjoy them.